my wife, we talk about things going on at the house when I'm gone. She heard at least eight loud wood knocks occurring one night over an hour. Every five minutes, there'd be a knock. Every three, every two, and then every minute. It was like somebody with a baseball bat hitting this huge tree that we had. She said it felt like something was trying to lure her outside. So she made sure not to walk in front of any windows to avoid being seen. She looked out front and didn't see anything going on. And she said it sounded like it was coming from the backyard distinctly. That's where the edge of our forest is. And the longer she didn't respond, the more frantic and the more it occurred. Hi there, you're listening to the Bigfoot Society Podcast, and I'm Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to individuals who have experienced Sasquatch in some way or another, so you won't want to miss an episode. Make sure you're subscribed on the platform that you're listening to, and share this episode with a friend. It does not cost a thing, and it helps the show continue to grow. If you'd like to hear Bigfoot Society episodes early and ad-free, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member. Links to those are in the show notes. In Bigfoot Society, I've taken far too much of your time so far, so let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, got the privilege of talking to Mike from East Texas today. He contacted me about some interesting things that have been going on around his area. And uh, as you may, if you're familiar with Bigfoot at all, there's definitely some Bigfoot things going on in the East Texas area. But how's it going tonight, Mike? All right. How are you doing over there, Jeremiah? I'm doing good. We're starting to get a little bit chilly out here in central Iowa, but I think we might have a little bit of little warm period but for right now it's pretty chilly it's about 20 to 30 oh yeah that's yeah my familiarity with bigfoot is it begins i remember being a kid and seeing a few episodes where they started featuring andre the giant dressed up as bigfoot living out in austin as a kid and hearing the occasional story from the other school kids about Bigfoots and stuff like that, but I never gave it any merit. I never believed in it. I, I put it out there with snipe hunting and fairies and elves and that kind of stuff. I thought it was more like a, a joke trying to get somebody's goat. And I always figured anything that big would have either been in a zoo or a museum years ago. Yeah, that was my knowledge. The abominable snowman was a claymation character. And I had more faith in the possibility of extraterrestrials than Bigfoot. And even that was very sketchy. Yeah, I I was never like, I hadn't even seen the Patterson-Gimlin film until I think probably the the 80s. And then Harry and Henderson's came out. I didn't even watch that. I just recently saw that on uh, Netflix or whatever the heck it was, streaming it with my wife. but. Our Bigfoot encounter, and this involves my wife and myself, it wasn't visual, thank God, but we are now both believers. And I bet a lot of other people have similar experiences, but they just brush them off as something else. And it's only until, only when rather, when you really look closely around yourself and other things and open your mind to possibilities that I believe people can start seeing signs and finding footprints and other signs, hearing things and recognizing that, oh, that's not an owl or what have you. But I think a lot of people don't disclose these weird things that they brush off either because they don't want people to think they're nuts. And especially if you have a professional reputation, you don't want to endanger that. Our house is over 60 years old. It's outside city limits, back up to a large, vast forest. And the only access to our backyard is through the front. And uh, it's a busy highway. And we would see intruders through our windows if anyone was in the front areas or coming up to the front. We have no trespassing signs. And I often shoot my 45s and 50 caliber out back, which I believe deters thieves pretty well. So we've never had anyone snooping around on our property. 
trespassing or poaching or anything like that since we moved here over five years ago. And that's generally how it is out in the country. People know everybody's armed, and so they don't screw around with people like that out here. The ha- when we moved in, the house had a bright mercury out in the front driveway, which would come on automatically when the sun went down. And I thought it was creepy and weird. I never really thought much about it. But now looking back, I think it was put up and used as what they would refer to out here in the country as a booger light, which is a deterrent for these things. And I guess you could say it it started October 2022. My wife heard a man's voice. I was out of town. And she heard a man's voice from outside the glass door that connects to our carport where entry into that is open and easy to get to. And she heard a man's voice a louder. Hey, but she looked and she saw no one out through the window of the door, but it creeped her out, scared her. So she stayed out of that room for weeks and shut and locked both doors. She thought it was, she brushed it off as an auditory hallucination maybe somebody across the street yelling. Uh, We do have neighbors across the highway and their house can act like a speaker. It's a brick house. And when they're on the front porch, the sound carries all the way across the highway at times, but they have to really be yelling loud to do that or making a lot of noise. But but he brushed it off. Let's see. I think it was April, 2022. We both heard a from the forest on coming back home from somewhere and I asked her, have you heard that before? And she said that she's heard it many times before, but she just thought it was an owl. See, that's what I mean. People just brush all this off. And then around May, we were out hiking at a state park that's nearby. It's where no hunting is allowed, but it's heavily populated with deer. And while we were hiking, we found two lower front legs of a deer that were torn off and they were placed close together side by side. They weren't cut off, but they were torn off. And you could tell from the way the hide was mangled around the edges and there was no blood around them. There were no ants. There were just two broken front legs. And I thought that's just weird. And it took me several months had to go by before I put it together and heard that other people who have had actual sightings on their properties and encounters and things of that nature that they had found. There's even a a number of people that have actually seen these creatures grab a a doe or a a small deer, grab a hold of it, rip the lower front legs off to hobble it so it can place it down and hide if there was a car or someone coming so the animal wouldn't get away and it would keep it alive until it grabbed it and then was able to take its quarry elsewhere and consume it. Yeah, so we that was about 30 minutes away from our our place, by the way. And then December 2022, we were out while I was out of town, it was about 10, 11 o'clock. My wife heard loud footsteps crunching around in the backyard, right up against the wall of our den. And she was in the den watching TV and she could hear it through the wall. It was that loud, but when she looked out there, she didn't see anything, but it was also extremely dark where you look out the window, but you can't see anything because the light inside is reflecting off the glass. And she just brushed it off. She thought maybe it was a deer or something. Now, March of 2023, this is when it really starts getting strange. I had been trying to develop this back area behind our house where it goes down into a little creek, a little hollow area back there into my feed plot where I could hunt locally in my own backyard. And uh, I put in a feeder, deer feeder, and I wanted to attract deer back there. So I took a jar of peanut butter and took the lid off, screwed the lid to a tree with uh, deck screws and opened the jar up, put it back on, and then cut the bottom out of it. And that's to allow the deer to come up and lick right out of it. And it was unscrewed. I went out there, it was about 
two or three days later, I went to go check on it, on the progress of it. And it was unscrewed from the lid, laying on the ground, and totally empty. Not a micro trace of peanut butter remained in it. And I brushed it off as raccoons, but looking back at it, the raccoon would have to climb up the tree about five feet, grip it with its bottom legs, straddle this tree that was about nine inches in diameter, and then unscrew the lid with both of its little raccoon hands, turning it to the left, and then not leave a trace of peanut butter in the jar, That and then remove the jar. It was just weird. I don't know. I thought, okay, I'll use apples instead. So I buy a bag of green apples, sometimes red from Walmart, and throw about five or six out there near the feeder. And the next day, every apple, it was just totally gone without a trace, without a piece of apple anywhere. Totally gone. Now, who's going to eat six apples and not leave a trace, not even a little piece? Just thought that was strange. So I started wondering about this. I thought maybe there is something to this because now we're starting to occasionally stream and and watch uh, Finding Bigfoot episodes. More for the comedic relief of Cliff, Bobo, and Matt. And I remember seeing them do calls. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'll just try one of these calls, one or two of these calls. So I did a couple of calls. And I didn't hear anything back. There was no reply. But what I didn't realize was if there was something going on out there, that probably ramped it up. And about two or three days later, I go out there to check on the deer corn and the feeder, see where the level's at, and see if I'm getting any little deer hoof prints out there and see what kind of activity I have. And I found a pile of scat. It was about six inches in diameter, about an inch and a half tall. And it was like a grayish black color. And it was just chalked full of seeds blackberry seeds and it was like something had eaten five pounds of blackberries and then defecated into the creek i have a little creek that runs back there right next to my feeder and the water flowing around it had reduced its size but when i found it it was about six inches in diameter about an inch and a half tall and i didn't think much of it i i I thought, oh, maybe it's raccoons. At that time, we had about four or five raccoons, a family of about three or four possum. We'd had deer coming down there. I'd been catching on my trail cam on a tree nearby. We even had, we even had a coyote come up in the yard, and we always had coyotes around here nearby. Within, oh gosh, almost two or three nights, they'd be within an eighth of a mile. and Needless to say, over time, all of those things disappeared, even our copperheads and our water moccasins and other snakes and stuff that we had there. Whatever is out there, it depleted the food resources to practically nothing. So we came back one night from visiting family, and it was about 830, and I remembered that I wanted to check on the deer feeder and see if I needed to put more deer corn in it or not and i didn't usually go down there at 8 30. it was start it was getting too dark this was march and i just never went down there that late before i'd always gone down there in the mornings or in the afternoons but this time i went down there and i heard a single very low deep menacing growl about 30 to 35 feet from my feeder in our creek off to my right and i didn't see anything but you know when i looked just straight ahead i didn't look up into the tree which i regret but i think whatever it was it may have been up in the tree or behind some trees and being down in a hollow it could project the sound and echo it off something else so it maybe sounded like it was coming from a different direction but uh, when i heard the sound it was was like a, just a but it, something inside me it triggers a, a primal response that told me to leave 
We'll be back with more Bigfoot Society after these words from our sponsors. And this is my property. I'm I'm protective of it. I'm armed usually most of the time, so I wasn't that time. But if it was a guy or, or an animal that I could see, I would have probably said something to it, stood up to it. But something inside me told me, just leave. Don't do anything. Don't run. Don't. There's no chance against this thing. Whatever it is, just walk away and get away. And that's what I did. I didn't even think of standing my own ground at that age. <laughs> and we haven't seen, like I said, we haven't seen any other animals since May 2023, including mice or armadillos or squirrels. The squirrels are reduced down to three squirrels. <laughs> and uh, it gets weirder. Now, May 2023, we had a field mouse get in our, a field mouse get in our house. and. I knew I was fixing to leave for a trip, so I, I wanted to make sure I caught this thing. But I knew if it was in one of those spring traps where it slaps down on their head, leaves a bloody mess, that my wife wouldn't want to mess with it. So she'd be scared of it. So, so I went to Walmart, got one of these green plastic tubular, what they call a humane trap. It's about, I guess, about inch and a quarter in diameter, about five six inches long, sure. dark green. One end has a sliding um, door on it that slides up, and the other has a spring-loaded door that you push in. So you have to have fingers to release whatever is in there. We caught the little mouse, and I, thought, I don't have time to deal with this because two days I had to be out of town, and I was getting my my stuff ready, my paperwork, and my clothes, and everything. So I just took this mouse in the trap and put it on this white vinyl shelf that we have gardening implements on out in the backyard, out at the back of the house. And there was a single two inch wide by six inch long smudge in the mud next to the shelf. The next, let me backtrack here. Two days later, when I came back, when I returned from my trip after I put it on the shelf, the thing was gone. The trap was totally gone and i thought that's weird the first thing that entered my mind was maybe a hawk got to it but i thought how's a hawk going to see it when it's in the middle of a three-tiered shelf that's a foot and a half to two feet off the ground and how's it going to grip slippery hard plastic with its talons couldn't possibly reach around that u-shaped plastic structure so i thought maybe a raccoon got it maybe this maybe that and just brushed it off but like i said there was a two inch by six inch long smudge mark in the mud next to where the shelf was like something had swiped across there and like maybe they were finger marks or i don't know digit marks that left in the mud and i I still didn't think much of it i thought maybe if it was a hawk that came down then that's what its feet did or something you just brush all this stuff off I was mowing my yard about three weeks after this on my riding mower. And the house is in, let's say you make a a square shape. The house would be in the center of the square. And I I mow in a pattern, which is like a horseshoe, because there's one part where I don't mow because it's just ground cover and trees and things. So so on one half of that would be a U-shaped pattern. I would come around one side and go around to the other and come back again and mow and cut a 42 inch wide swath with my riding mower each time going from the outside to the inside. On the third pass, when I came around, and I keep in mind, I made two other passes with the mower on the lowest setting. And I, I walk my yard first before I mow to make sure I'm not going to run over any big sticks or debris that I'm going to have to wind up picking up pieces of paper or whatever so i'd walked at first there was nothing out there at all and i mowed this area came through nothing there on the third time i came back by the green plastic trap was back right in the middle of where i had first mowed and there's no way i could have gone over that we got there on the mower the mower would have 
hit it, shattered it in a, into a mass of little pieces. And it was about 10 feet from the edge of the forest. And I still have the trap, by the way, if anybody wants to test it for anything. So that got me really freaked out. That got me thinking something with an opposable thumb had to have picked this up because the mouse was gone. You have to push that door in at one end or you have to lift the door up at the other. And both of them were in their closed position. So if it slid the door up, it pushed it back down. If it pushed the other one in, it took its finger out. And it was almost like like I had an impression, like the thing was saying, more mice, please, whatever it was. <laughs> Thanks for the snack. You got any more? Yeah, exactly. And it, it was just weird. My wife, I, I probably spent about two, sometimes three weeks a month on the road. And uh, we talk about things going on at the house when I'm gone. Um, she heard at least eight loud wood knocks occurring one night over a, over an hour and it started every five minutes there'd be a knock and then it got down to every three minutes and then every two minutes and then every minute it was like whatever was making these loud knocks which sounded to her like somebody with a baseball bat hitting on this huge tree that we have back behind our house from about 25 feet away from the house and she said it felt like something was trying to lure her outside. So she made sure not to walk in front of any windows to avoid being seen. She turned the TV on mute to try and discern if it was somebody with like a pneumatic nail driver nearby or across the street building a frame structure or a hammer or something. She looked out front and didn't see anything going on. And she said it sounded like it was coming from the backyard distinctly. That's where the edge of our forest is. And as the longer she didn't respond, the more frantic and the more it occurred. And then it stopped. When I returned, I was talking to her on the phone during this. And when I came back, I found an area on a pine tree that we have that was rubbed smooth of bark where it was hit by either a rock or a limb. And there was a spot that was, like I say, it was rubbed smooth. And directly above that area, a about one and a quarter inch pine tree limb was snapped down and pointed down towards the house. And I'd cut that limb off. And that was when I saw the smooth spot because it was below it and it it was just weird mike how high up on the tree was the smooth spot it was about about seven seven feet wow it's still out there and let's see june nothing it's funny because it's not an everyday thing or even an every week thing so I, i had to keep chronological records on all this june of 2023 I decided to search the backyard and I found a tree down in the hollow that was ripped out of the ground. The roots snapped off, the bark stripped off the top branches, and then it was thrown up into the fork of a bigger tree that was about 12 foot high. I've kept pictures of the tree with the smooth spot and a picture of that one as well. And then later in June, 2023, my wife heard multiple loud owl hoots while I was out of town. It's Funny, there's a pattern that when I'm out of town, that's when she would start getting harassed. (laughs) On my return, we both heard multiple hoots. And I don't, I think it thought she was the only one home. I park out front and the house backs up to the forest on the other side. So it wouldn't have seen my vehicle. But we've come to the conclusion that it, it looks in one of our windows. And We've got some more stuff I should add to this that I'll get to eventually. But she heard these loud owl hoots, and she's not really a country person. I'm not either. We're city transplants, but I've been out in the country more than her enough to know and recognize owl hoots. And you know, if it sounds like an 800-pound owl, 
<laughs> it's probably not an owl, folks. So I, I was just going to ask uh, because I was going to ask why was she so concerned about owl hoots? But it, so what you're saying is that this owl was a loud, loud sounding owl. Yes. It was very loud. A lot of people will mistake doves for owls. They're more along that <clears throat> that decibel level, like a a pigeon or a, a dove. And this thing was loud. It, it had resonance to it. And I was hearing it too. We were watching TV with the volume probably about half to three quarters up, and we're hearing it through the wall outside. And it was too loud, too deep, and it was too close. And we just sat there listening to that. And something told me that's not an owl. And I wasn't going to try to go out there and look because it was dark. I wasn't going to see what this was. I didn't want to put myself in that situation. So after that, let's see here. I was out in the backyard again probably checking on my deer feeder. That's the thing. I'm checking on that or on my trail cam. And I found what I thought was a footprint. I got a picture of that one. It's in red clay that was dried hard, but it wasn't very distinct. It didn't have any distinction marks, but I could tell it was something heavy. And it was when it stepped in, it was going uphill, and the heel is much deeper than the rest of the foot. I just thought, well, that's weird. You know, but you still, you brush these things off. It takes a whole lot of them to add up into something that you just can't really explain. While I'm out there looking around and looking back at that tree with the rub spot on it, I found a weird-looking large sandstone. It's a type of rock with odd grooves and holes in it, and it looks like something from a cave or from far away from here. I've never seen rocks like this out in this area before. And it's probably the only rock we, unless you want to count little pebbles and pieces of gravel, but it's like a fist sized rock and it's just really weird. And it was lying near the pine tree where the limb was broken and the one with the smooth spot on it that was aimed towards our house. So I'm of the theory that's what it was hitting the tree with, doing the knock with. You could probably make more noise with a rock hitting a tree than you could with a limb or a branch, especially I think the bark would dissipate some of the sound and absorb it. I left it where it was, though. We still have it there. By this time, I'd already started listening to uh, Bigfoot and Beyond and other shows and learning a little bit to know I didn't want this thing to perceive any type of gifting situation or what have you. And July, my wife heard three hoops in succession coming from our ne- next door neighbor's stock. And this was just a few weeks before that last tree near the other one was found the next morning broken and pointing towards the house, which I have another picture of tree limb that was, oh, it must have been nine, nine foot high. And just snapped off and again pointed towards the house. And it's it was pretty good size. I've got trees out there that are like six to eight inches in diameter, 12 feet high, that are broken over. And yeah, we when we have a storm or a tornado or something, we know which ones get broken because we got to go out there and pick them all up and clean it all up. Right. And this was several weeks after that that this happened occasionally you'll hear something snap out there when you're watching tv relaxing at night but we've never seen a bigfoot and we do not want to we just have a very creepy feeling we just thought it was silly but now it seems like a very likely possibility we, we've also experienced a strong skunk-like smell that lingers for hours but we weren't sure if it was bigfoot or just a skunk and now my wife has a pretty good sized garden and the most recent things that we've experienced have been in the past two months and I didn't document them. I should have, I'll probably will and update this information there, but 
when I target practice in the backyard or with my 45. We'll be back with more Bigfoot Society after these words from our sponsors. There was a late afternoon when I just finished target shooting and I heard a yell, a guttural, atypical Bigfoot sounding yell. And it was about, who knows, a quarter or eighth of a mile away from the forest, coming from the forest. And it was like replying to my gunshots, like saying, cut that crap out. Can you, ex- and, when you say guttural yell, and I don't want to put words into your mouth, but. Can I do it, an imitation of it? Or is it like when you hear like the long drawn out one, that kind of uh, thing? Not or like different? the Ohio. Yeah, I guess, but not sounding like a klaxon alarm horn. Okay. Like that one does so much. Just more like a, almost like a, almost like an elephant kind of thing. And I thought, what the hell could be doing that? We don't have anything out here in East Texas that makes sounds like that. We don't. Yeah, we just don't. She's got a pretty good sized garden and she's got some hog panels that are formed up in a tunnel, which are about the top of it on the inside is about seven feet tall from the ground. It's like a tube and you can walk inside it. She was growing green beans in that. And she noticed one day when she went in there, all the green beans were gone. Every one of them, they were just picked off. And the way that this structure is made, the other foliage from rose bushes and other trees and things would conceal someone in there. If someone or something went up in there and could reach up and pluck those green beans and just eat them, because none were on the ground, then it would be hidden, especially at night. Cars going by wouldn't see it. No one would see it. It'd be inside there just happily eaten away. And we had an okra plant, which had four okra pods on it. They were gone. And the okra plant, the stalk itself was ripped out of the bed. And that's no small feat because those things about three quarter of an inch. It takes a pretty strong man just to rip a full grown okra plant out of the ground with both hands. And it was just laid over. After it was ripped out, it was laid over. And we have a little fence we put up to keep rabbits out of the garden. A little metal plastic coated, like a hog fence, decorative more or less. And there was a bend in the top of it, like a V-shaped bend, where something had stepped into it and crimped it down. And then <laughs> the icing on the cake, and I got a picture of this I can send you later. A footprint in the middle of one of the raised beds. And I didn't have a tape measure with me or a dollar bill or anything to photograph it for scale. I just took a picture with my phone and then I was able to put my boot up against it without leaving an impression, but just over an inch or so, but next to it. And it's about a size 10 in length, but extremely wide. I don't even know what width that would be. It was like a normal foot and a half would be super wide. And then the big toe was really big and round and the other toes were long, but I'll send you that picture. And when I saw it, that freaked me out. That was what sealed the deal. That was, that was it. That told me there's not going to be some guy walking around with big, weird, wide feet, stepping in people's raised beds and eating their green beans and making these noises. And (laughs) it's just not going to happen. Even teenage kids are not going to be doing that, especially out here in the country where they know they'll get shot. That's um, the thing. It's because in, in, down in Texas, it's, you don't just go messing around with uh, someone's land because you know that everyone yeah. in Texas is ready to do what needs to be done. That's Oh, yeah there's, yeah. yeah. there's places I go in my job where I'm strapping out in public. No, it's just typical. People strapping everywhere down here. Yeah, I think, yeah, kids know that in an early age. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I want to go back to a part that you mentioned where your wife had heard something from the neighbor's property. Yeah. So did she heard yells or whoops, or I didn't quite hear what she heard? Yeah, she heard three, she heard three whoops and they were 
the atypic groups. The, the nearest she said she could figure was that it came from the neighbor's property. When things make a noise in the forest, they can echo any number of ways. And if it's got some pretty strong lungs and pushing out some force, it could echo off of who knows, especially on land that's not flat, that we have a hollow back there. And we think from where we're positioned and where this park is, and she's looked at Google Earth aerial shots, that these things mainly reside in that park or the that park because there's no hunting allowed there is that's their refrigerator that's their fully stocked freezer of meat right that's where all the deer are and they don't have anybody competing and at night it's closed unless you're a camper in the camping areas Mm -hmm. and there's not that many people camping there so it's a great resource for them but when the resources get depleted or when they want to go get fresh stream water from a, a natural spring, which we have a, a lot of springs out here where we are, or when they want to explore, or when they want to, you know, have new ground. I, I don't know what it is, a territorial exploratory thing or what they do, but when they come out to other areas, I believe they deplete those areas. Uh, they exhaust the resources because, like I said, all the wildlife work on our property is gone, nothing. And I believe once they exhaust those food resources, then they go somewhere else. And they may just circle around in a, in a big circle, or they may go to different areas, or they may do a migratory pattern based on the weather. When it gets really cold, they may go further south. But I really think it's... It, we haven't heard anything in quite a while. We haven't had any weird feelings going out in the backyard or anything. The activity has gone down to nothing. And I believe it's directly related to the depleted resources. And yeah, it's, it's made me a believer and I, I haven't seen one. Like I said, I don't want to see one. I've talked to people that have had violent, aggressive encounters with them that have been on other shows and it's nice to have someone you can talk to that you don't feel like they're going to think you're nuts and they'll fill in a lot of blanks or they'll have the same exact experience in some ways and it's refreshing i think that just like we were doing i think most people do that they brush these things off they their mind wants to make sense of it and wants to put it in a box as something rational and normal and indigenous and natural. And so then they can let it go and move on to with their lives. And, but once you encounter these things and you start becoming aware, it changes your life. I won't go hunt by myself anymore. If I do go hunt, I'm going to hunt with a buddy and I sure ain't going to be out at night in the woods. Once it's like six, six thirty, seven, I'm not outside. I come in the house because it makes you realize there's something out there. And I, I believe the increased frequency in the coverage of this with these podcasts and TV shows and videos on YouTube and everything are the direct result of habitation dwindling down as we encroach on their areas with more development, business, industrial, subdivisions, schools, whatever. And they're running out of habitat. And as we are in now an era of instant video footage with phones, trail cams, drones, body cams, dash cams, security cameras, all that, we're going to get more and more footage. But the conundrum is, regardless of how much footage we get, no one's going to believe these things exist until somebody hits one with a semi or takes one out with a big bore high caliber rifle and manages to hang on to the body before whoever the forces that be decide to come and take it. Your neighbor's Have you ever asked your neighbors or talked to them about the subject or said, hey, do you guys ever? Oh, yeah. Recently. Okay. Recently, I talked to the old lady 
who has a, a stock pond next to us. And I'll describe this situation and you tell me what you think. Her husband passed away. Okay, let's go back when he was still alive. They moved out here in the early 60s, 1960s. And they heard weird noises coming from the woods behind them. And they just never thought much of it. He said, that's just some damned animal. After he passed away, she was out here by herself. And she heard noises and screams and other weird sounds and things. But I noticed when we moved out here about six years ago that she was not at her house very often. That she's usually with her kids in another city and leaves her house and has people come in and check on her house in the daytime and has a dog. It's in a cage outside, but it, it's a fully boxed in cage, roof, sides, everything. It's like a kennel cage and they feed it. And I guess they let it out sometimes. I don't know, but I've never seen it outside of that cage. What well, was it? She was telling me. She said, yeah, be sure. She said, I totally believe you. When I told her about what I've been hearing, I asked her, I said, have you ever heard anything weird? And she said, yeah, we've heard lots of weird noises coming out there, yells and screams and sound like a woman screaming and all kinds of stuff. And I told her pretty much everything I've told you. And she said, I believe that there's something out there. She said, but don't tell anybody if you ever want to sell your house or you won't be able to sell it. And it makes me wonder if that was what she had happened to her when her husband passed. I don't know. It's just very strange. You won't see her out there when it when the sun starts going down. You only see her in the mornings and in the afternoons, if at all, and not very often. And We've occasionally, we have a window on the end of our house and you can watch TV and see the light reflecting from inside onto the glass for the most part until you turn the light off. And then when you turn the light off, you can of course see out through that window at night. And occasionally myself and my wife have seen something like a black shadow just move real quickly across the bottom corner of that window, like something was peeking in and jump back as soon as we looked over at it. And it makes me think, yeah, before it went over to the garden, that's where it was looking, and it got curious and watches us, and it makes noise and tries to get people to come outside. And, yeah, I think they're, I think they're curious. I think they're older than humans. I think they're curious. They're uh, territorial. I think that they're omnivorous. I think there's different variations of them depending where you are geographically climate wise i think that they when people see a footprint on the ground and there's no others around it i think that they're using trees i also think that they step back into their footprints an old trick native americans have been doing for thousands of years when hunting so they can conceal where they're going i think they're not as smart as humans but they're smarter than chimpanzees or great apes. I don't know that they have a language. I don't believe in any of the the woo where they have portals and mind speak and all that kind of stuff. I think they're primates, but I think they're very smart. And I think that gives them the ability to hide and stay hidden very well. I think that they are responsible for the thousands of people that are missing without a trace throughout our parks. Mm. I, I think that if you panic and run when people have seen them, it triggers a predator response in them to pursue. I think if uh, people have a certain sense on them, it could attract them. I think they're, it, they may have individualized uh, behaviors and attitudes like people you have some that are jerks some that are psychopaths some that are nice and i think when they run across a bad one and i think they're very short-tempered chimpanzees are are also very short-tempered i think there's a lot in common with chimpanzees and the ones in texas that people see are described as being like 
big chimpanzees with small ears. We'll be back with more Bigfoot Society after these words from our sponsors. Overdeveloped lats, broad shoulders, and instead of hands for feet like chimps have, they're just feet. And I think it's another undiscovered species. And people are like, oh, there's no such thing. Yeah, you never know, folks. It's wild stuff. And we're keeping your area very vague. I know, so I know a little bit more, right? Because we were talking before. And have you done a, a Google search on your town yet? Uh, no, not really. You need to, because there are multiple reports of sightings in your area from different, not just BFRO, but other resources from over the years where there oh, have been okay. individuals that have actually seen uh, Bigfoot's foot back in, and I, I want to say very carefully, I will say a decade of the 70s. I, I think that's, I can, that's pretty, that could cover anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they, yeah, there yeah, are I multiple the sightings. BFRO site, so yep. Too. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I would, I can give you more info after we're done recording. Oh, okay. It, it's coupling that with what you've told me. It, it's obvious you got something going on, man. You have trail cams up around your property, I think you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And I've never gotten anything on the trail cam. Yeah. I've gotten weird light phenomenon, but that could be a bird going by. I don't right, want to jump yeah, to the yeah. woo factor and say, oh, it was a portal opening. Yeah. <laughs> it was a UFO taking the Bigfoot back to Mars. You know? You're not seeing um, like orbs or anything like that around your property? Or anything, no. Right? Okay. No. Uh -huh. yeah. No. But yeah, it's, I'm just, I'm just glad, extremely grateful that all of that has died down and, and stopped and gone. And I hope if it's gone, I hope it doesn't come back. Mm. Uh, I really do, because it's an unsettling feeling to be scared to go out into your yard mm -hmm. at night, or when you're coming from the store and you're unloading the car of groceries and you feel like you got to race in every yeah. load, and, and you just have a creepy, ominous feeling that you're going to be attacked by something. It's, yeah, that's not good. So I got a 50 caliber... I got a couple of 50 caliber rifles and some 45s and you'd think target practice and shooting out the backyard would be enough to keep the damn things out, deter them. But mm -hmm. apparently it didn't. It just makes them mad. But I, I think when they deplete their resources, they move along. Yeah. Hopefully. And it sounds like it might be getting to that point on your property if you haven't seen any animals recently, but have you considered, do you have any audio recorders or you probably, no, you're really not trying that. to capture I wanna, evidence. You just no, and I encourage, well, I discourage anyone rather that wants to go out that lives out in East Texas. Don't go out and make calls on your own property. If you're going right. to do Bigfoot calls and hoops and howls, go do it out somewhere way out in an area that's not inhabited. If you want to hear them respond back, which I, I don't recommend because I think what it does, it makes them curious if they hear that, mm -hmm. makes them curious. Then they come in to see what made that sound. And then if they find resources that are good for them, they're liable to stick around. And yeah, it was just a, a bad move on my part to do that. I'm not doing that again. Yeah. It's but, tricky because uh, we just don't know what that means. Yeah. You, you, it's a good point you bring up. Don't, don't do it on your own property if you don't want no, them hanging around. And, yeah, yeah, don't let investigators do it if they if they <laughs> right. want to come investigate on your property. Or they don't live there. They don't care what happens after that. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've met people through other podcasts that I plan to go to Oklahoma to some casino dumpsters at night with a certain group of individuals and inside a, a safe big vehicle and observe 
what they have observed, which are these things fishing through the dumpsters and eating out of the grease traps and their supposed video footage of it. That, that's it's the really good stuff. That's a fascinating yeah. thing is the really yeah. good video is not featured on social media. It's like someone deletes it or won't allow it to be posted or what have you. And so you get a lot of these disinformation videos, as I call them, where it's questionable at best. Yeah, know, or it's like that actual suit, video you know. has disappeared. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. And I want to I want to see one just so I can allay that curiosity but at the same time i'm afraid to see it because then i'm afraid i won't be able to get it unsee it i won't be able to get it out of Mm -hmm. my head and uh, it's such a shock to people who have seen them and and have had encounters with them especially up close and aggressive that it traumatizes them it Mm -hmm. leaves them with ptsd and some have severe alcohol and drug abuse issues that arise afterward just from trying sure. to self-medicate and deal with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. So I, well, on one hand, I don't want to see one, but I, on the other hand, I'm torn, but I'm sure not going to do anything that will attract them. People got to watch that too. If you have leftover food, don't throw it out there in your backyard. you thinking that the raccoons and hogs or whatever are going to come clean it up. Don't do that. These are opportunistic animals. They will find food resources available and take advantage of it. And to my understanding, it becomes a regular expected thing. And then you're going to have problems when you stop doing it. Um, I also think if they were recognized and acknowledged, which they haven't been yet, it would create way too much trouble, way too much problems. I think the Department of the Interior and the U.S. Parks and Wildlife Service have a strong ongoing clandestine campaign to assure that doesn't happen. Also, there would be tons of lawsuits for all those people that vanished mysteriously without a trace. It could get really you know, wild. Yeah. Who's, yeah. Yeah. It could get very, very bad. Oh, yeah. They're like, well, yeah, nothing to see here, folks. Don't talk about it. Um, see, yeah. And, but I agree with you. I think. The government knows a little bit more than they're letting on for sure. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anything that's weird, unusual, the military industrial complex wants to adopt it and use it for some military application. Mm-hmm. I think that's been the same situation with the UAPs or UFOs. They don't want, if it's some technology that they can adopt for military use for superiority. Yeah. And, I, and I've heard that as well with the Sasquatch that. They'd look into the possibility of using it to make some super soldiers. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I could see exploring its genetics, maybe to do some genetic modifications to humans with their genetics, or to see what comprises it, what makes it what it is, its strength, because apparently these things have unbelievable strength. Like I said, the trees that i've got they're broken it would take machinery mm-hmm. to do that or several people using machinery to do that hand hand leverage and, and things like that to do it and i ain't seen anybody back out here on my property <laughs> so <laughs> right. whatever it is exactly. doing it covertly and quickly it, it'll make you not want to go in the wood <laughs> absolutely mikey definitely you got some weird stuff going on and please keep me in the loop with what you got going on okay. there you probably haven't heard the last weird thing but uh, i hope I well yeah that's true but uh, if you happen to hear something else let me know but uh, i appreciate you reaching out to me uh, and uh yeah hopefully this is it and sometimes yeah. that happens they just go away and you Maybe put up a few more trail cams and you won't have to worry about it. But that seems you yeah. Put, you and put I up, recommend yeah. I recommend anybody having any of these situations that doesn't want this to happen. Go get some motion activated solar powered lights. Oh yeah, you can get them at That's Walmart. Stick those along your property where just at the edge of where you're having them come in, where you're having activity, and that's helped. That it, I, I guess it's helped. It sure hadn't increased it mm, sure 
have lights and don't throw any food out. Don't put any apples out. If you do have, gosh, just keep it to deer corn. I've heard that they eat that too, but they're less attracted to that than they are to other things that people put out sometimes in deer feeders. Yeah. Anything that's like to lure hogs or whatever, that can be more attractive to them. Yeah, and just there's a part of me too that believes in what the Native Americans say in that leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. You don't call them, you don't make noises, right. you don't put things out there, you don't gift, you don't put food out there. And if you do see one, don't freak out, panic, and run. Just yeah, right. keep your eye on it and walk away and get to a safe place. Because, yeah, I don't think there's any magic. I think they're just big, dangerous, scary, unclassified, undiscovered primates that we have here in North America that eventually will be revealed and classified. And it's going to be interesting mm-hmm. when that day comes. Absolutely. Mike, I appreciate you chatting tonight. It has been a fun discussion. I do want to talk to you a little bit more, but I do want to have that off the recorded portion just to keep privacy about your location. But thank you so much for chatting tonight, Mike. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. It always makes you feel a little better to express that out without fear of someone saying you're nuts (laughs) that's yeah not here don't worry about that all right thank you mike here at bigfoot society our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment but we need to hear your story if you've experienced something that you just can't explain please send me an email at bigfootsociety at gmail.com then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all. It's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because I know you haven't been sleeping. I understand what you're going through and I appreciate every one of you listening. <laughs>